As the de facto National Library of the United States, the home of the Copyright Office and the recipient of many donations of sound, recorded sound and film and television and video, we have a unique opportunity now that we can bring it all together in one place. The audiovisual creativity of the American people really transformed the audiovisual perception of the world in the 20th century. It's a huge American accomplishment. A state which will live a sentiment in infamy. No one can contemplate current conditions. Founded in 1800, the Library of Congress is the nation's oldest federal cultural institution and the largest library in the world. It seeks to spark imagination and creativity and to further human understanding and wisdom by providing access to knowledge through its magnificent collections, programs, and exhibitions. The mission of the Library of Congress? To make its resources available and useful to the Congress and to the American people and to sustain and preserve its collections for generations to come. Over 80% of American movies made between 1893 and 1930 have been lost. The Library of Congress Packard Campus for Audiovisual Conservation represents a unique private-public partnership between the Packard Humanities Institute, the U.S. Congress, and the Library of Congress. The gift of the Packard Campus is the culmination of years of vision and effort put forth by the Packard Humanities Institute and Congress in particular, who recognize the value of preserving the past in order to inform the future. The reason that we can do this is because of the achievements of the thousands and tens of thousands of employees of the Hewlett Packard Company over the years, especially in the first 50 years. And I think that they should really take the most pride in this. I don't think anyone should give me credit for it. Thanks to David Woodley Packard's deep understanding of the value and necessity of preserving America's audiovisual heritage, we will be able to sustain an audiovisual legacy otherwise lost to the ravages of time or indifference. David's background is in the study of, of early Greek civilization and Roman culture. And from his own studies, uh, he realized that looking at the fragments of cultures gives a very incomplete record of, of what survived from thousands of years ago. And I, I think it's fair to say that he did not want that to happen to American culture. And so that was very much, I think, the motive spirit behind the creation of this Packard campus. Until this moment in history, the ongoing abilities and capabilities to preserve and to conserve the nation's audiovisual record have been limited. The gift of the Packard campus, designed to grow and change with contemporary and future technology challenges, changes all of that. For the creative well-being of, of a country, of a, of a society. You have to have a collective memory. You have to have, you have, to have a foundation or, or a rich fertile ground for creativity to sprout. And art, art doesn't happen in a vacuum. It happens because uh, there's this rich background, rich history, rich traditions, and, and someone with genius does something new from that. When you look at recorded sound, television and motion pictures, you're really seeing a, a great part of the history of America that can get captured in those. And, it's, and they're also a media that people are attracted to. So it's a great way to, way to tell the story of America and with six million items, an amazing um, spread of creativity. The Library of Congress's motion picture, broadcasting, and recorded sound division maintains the world's largest collection of audiovisual materials. The Packer Campus houses the entire collection, including theatrical films, newsreels, television programs, radio broadcasts, early voice recordings of historical figures, and commercial sound recordings. We have 1.2 million moving image items, and that includes about 700,000 videotape, 500,000 reels of film, 
We get in about 30,000 items through copyright every year, but we also take in uh, some very large film and video collections through uh, gift and purchase every year as well. In the early days of moving pictures, producers filed paper prints of their projects with the Copyright Office of the Library of Congress. So they would send them to the Library of Congress to prevent piracy. And we have thousands of films that only survive on paper. Unfortunately, the films are lost. Innovative custom technologies unique to the Packard campus give conservators new tools to recover treasures from the past. We're now transferring the films. We're re-photographing them off of the paper back onto film so we can restore the titles. One of the, the key functions of the Packard campus is to preserve the film record of productions from the 19th century up till about 1951. And that particular type of film was known as nitrate film because of the composition of the materials from which it was produced. And so it, it had the inherent capability of being flammable, intensely flammable. So we have a special set of coal vaults for uh, a collection of nitrate film that amounts to about 140 to 50 million feet of nitrate film. This is one of our uh, nitrate acclimatization vaults. And in here, we have uh, actually two collections that we just received in the past week or so of uh, nitrate prints. These all came out of a, a barn in Tennessee where they were very uh, lovingly looked after by their owner who has turned them over to the library. Uh, now on the other hand, not all films survive as well. As I, you can see with this reel, which is probably from the 1920s, uh, the brown powder that's appearing is actually the film breaking down. There may be still some photography in there that we can save, but a good portion of it is going to have to be cut out because it's just deteriorated beyond view. A lot of it is studio material, the original camera negatives for practically all of the films released by Warner Brothers and Columbia during that period. This is where we focus our attention in our film preservation laboratory in making new safety copies from those nitrate prints. Ultimately, our goal is to, to have these films around for future generations, and we're talking uh, not necessarily our, our grandchildren, but our grandchildren's grandchildren. So we want to have this stuff around for a very long period of time. Of all sound recordings released in the U.S. from the 19th century through the end of 1965, more than 85% are no longer commercially available to the public. The Packard campus is also home to specialized audio preservation laboratories. Here, our audio department restores, preserves, and conserves every known format of recorded sound. The collections range from the wax cylinders used in the late 19th and early 20th centuries to today's CDs, MP3s, and every other digital technology. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. If you think about reading a speech, say, by FDR, and then the difference of, uh, say, to a school child of actually hearing that nasally patrician voice talk about a day of infamy, and that the impact that that might have as opposed to reading the speech, you sort of get a sense of how important it is to preserve the sound and not just the words. Thank you very, very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to kick off our show tonight with Benny Goodman and his all-stars from Base Street. They've been busting every record in the country. So let's have a tremendous hand for this all-star combination. Now we can preserve this for the next generation. One of our goals here at the Library of Congress is to be able to do this same thing using digital technology for the next 50, 100, 200 years. That's an incredible challenge because the digital world is very different from the analog world. But that's essentially where we want to go so that the people 50 years from now can hear exactly what we're hearing 
in this great sounding room now. The Library of Congress is home to both the National Recording Preservation Board and the National Film Preservation Board to ensure the increased public access to America's sound recording and film heritage. More than 65% of television programs produced in America since the 1940s are not available in archives and may be lost forever. There's a lot of forgotten humor. That's just one form of creativity in which we have a particularly rich collection. And uh, with the Bob Hopes a jukebox full of, full of 80,000 pages of jokes, we have a wonderful clip of uh, Johnny Carson interviewing Groucho Marx after he got a letter inviting him to contribute to the Library of Congress. It's, it's, it's hilarious. Dear Mr. Marx, and uh, so forth and so on and so on and so on and so on. He's the librarian of, of Congress. May I ask if you've made suitable, suitable provision for preserving your personal papers? If not, I invite you to consider the claims of the Library of Congress as an appropriate repository. In the library's manuscript division may be found many of the nation's manuscript treasures including the personal papers of most of the presidents. This is all legitimate. The correspondence of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, James... We don't have James to read the whole thing, Madison, that's the idea. James that's Madison, that's rather impressive, Ulysses though, isn't it? Grant, Abraham Lincoln... You're gonna mumble all through this thing? <laughs> <laughs> I think that is, uh... Well, it's an extraordinary. I was so astonished. When that I is it. I think that um, people will find sources of renewal. Anything that's a renaissance is a rebirth of something that was there before. All of this is part of an ongoing pageant of creativity of which humor is a, is a great part. I think people are going to have a lot of fun with this and uh, we're, we hope that the enthusiasm keeps going. Serious study, serious preservation doesn't mean that people can't have fun with it and that in having fun you don't get new ideas. That's part of creativity after all. If we lose our past, you really can never recapture that. And, I, and we have lost things through the years, and there have been some major losses, and if you have the ability to keep it, do keep it, because it will be instructive and useful for generations, centuries from now. We're positioned to begin ingesting and preserving and reformatting the materials that, that will be invented in the future that we know nothing about. So we look backward and we look forward, and that's unique. There's no institution quite like the Packard campus, and I must say the Library of Congress, anywhere in the world. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.